Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Amen. Good afternoon and welcome to Pentecost Pause for Tuesday, June 16th. It is a blessing to be with you in this online space as we take a moment to hit the pause button on our day and to explore a new spiritual practice. We, are, we continue to gather under the theme of spiritual practices for the weary. In the past two weeks, we have, um, dis we have described and explored Lectio Divina as well as a prayer labyrinth. And today, um, we will talk about devotionals. But let us <clears throat> sing together, O God, beyond all praising. O God, beyond all praising, we worship you today and sing the love amazing that songs cannot repay. For we can only wonder at every gift you send, at blessings without number, and mercies without end. We lift our hearts before you and wait upon your word. We honor and adore you, our great and mighty Lord. I invite you to grab your Bible, I'm grabbing mine, and turn to the Psalms. The Psalms are about in the middle of the Bible, as you can see. And please find Psalm 139. For our scripture passage today, I thought I'd return to this, this classic. We won't read the whole thing, uh, but we'll begin at verse 1. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you knew it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely, the darkness will cover me, and the light around me become night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed me in my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, that I know them very well. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The spiritual practice that we will explore today um, is that of devotionals. And I think reading devotionals are probably one of the most common spiritual practices that lots of people engage in. It's really accessible and it's probably because there are so many resources um, in the world around devotional reading. Um, and devotion really is a time to, a time set apart, either at the beginning of the day, at the noon time, or even at night before we uh, go to bed, that we devote ourselves to some kind of reading um, that centers us 
and prepares us for what is to come next, whether that is our day or the rest of our day or um, a good night's rest. Um, today, I want to just share with you some of the devotion devotional options. And again, there are so many resources out there for devotional reading. But the first I would love to direct you to is the Bible. And this is a particular Bible. It's not just um, uh, one that has uh, all of the scripture, but um, in, this is a Lutheran study Bible. Uh, you can get this um, on, through Augsburg Fortress. And what I love about this particular, um, what I love about this particular uh, Bible is that it comes in the very back, if you can read that, with a Bible reading plan. And there are three different Bible reading plans. There's the challenge path, a survey path, and the sampler path. And really, it takes you through week by week of scripture. It assigns scripture every day. This is one of the options that I've used before in my life um, to start my day. Uh, I will look at what the assigned um, reading is for that day of the week and go to it and read. Um, and I usually will spend some time in reflection, um, whether that is just spending some quiet time or I've even pu pulled out my journal in the past. Um, and written about what it is that intrigues me or challenges me in a particular um, scripture passage. So that's one option for a devotional. I've got a couple more here. And what's so nice about devotions is that they come um, in hard copies and electronically. So if you um, don't want to go and buy resources, you don't have to. There are plenty of free online devotionals, and I'll get to those in just a few minutes. Um, so here is another quite popular one that we pass out here at Grace, um, is Our Daily Bread. Um, and it is comes to you in um, three months, so June, July, and August for 2020. And every day there's a devotional in here. There's some kind of scripture reading, as well as a reflection from a writer and a prayer. That's a good option. I've used this in the past, especially if I don't have, if my calendar is really full. It's a really nice option. <laughs> um, I have a couple other things that I've done here as well. Courage to change. If um, uh, I have had experiences, uh, I'm, I am uh, an adult child of an alcoholic and, and so I have participated in recovery groups in the past. And so this is a really helpful um, devotional book that is particular to recovery, um, um, following 12-step methods. It's, it's, um, it's, I have found it delightful. If that's something that is um, true in your life or you have experiences with yourself, this is a really wonderful resource. Um, sometimes I just pick up my catechism and that's my devotional. I read some of the Ten Commandments, or I'll read the Lord's Prayer and I will read and reflect upon what Martin Luther wrote in his explanations. Um, this is something that I did in, in, in my seminary course, in my, um, um, my Lutheran confessional course, where I read through the Catechism and I journaled um, about how I experienced um, reading the Ten Commandments, the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, things of that nature, as well as thinking about the sacraments. It's really helpful if you're looking for more of a, a Lutheran um, uh, devotional practice. This is a good, way, a good place to start. And also, you can just read poetry. It doesn't have to be scripture. It doesn't have to be a reflection that someone else writes. This is um, a book by John O'Donohue, um, who is a, a poet. Uh, and this book is probably one of my favorite books. It's called To Bless the Space Between Us. Um, and it has all kinds of um, poems. Um, there's a morning poem and a blessing for a new year. I mean, all kinds of topics. So it's more topical than it is daily devotion. I'm going to 
pick the camera up and switch my camera around so I can show you online devotionals. If none of those speak to you, um, some of these might. So here is my computer. And right now I am on a site um, called CAC.org. That's the Center for Action and Contemplation. Um, Richard Rohr, who is a um, Franciscan monk and a writer and a theologian, um, he will send, if you sign up, if you click under Richard Rohr, go to Daily Meditations, sign up. It'll take you to a page where you can select daily or weekly or monthly emails to receive. And you plug in your information and you click submit and that will come to your inbox on a daily or weekly or monthly basis. I have found this, um, this is my current devotional practice. I read his daily meditation um, before I start work actually every day. And it helps me to start right, to start with God. Another option for online devotions is something called God Pause, which is through my seminary, Luther Seminary. If you go to luthersem.edu and you just click into the search bar and you um, type in God Pause, it'll take you to this daily devotional. Um, usually they are written by alumni of Luther Seminary, so that might be a pastor or a deacon or a youth um, minister of some kind. Um, uh, and sometimes they're also written by um, uh, professors as well. So it has the scripture of the day, a devotion, and then a prayer. This is a really helpful one. This, And you can also sign up to get these electronically delivered to your email inbox every morning. This was my practice um, when I was in seminary, actually. Um, that I opened up God Pause daily. Flip us back around here. Daily devotionals am, is obviously a disciplined practice because it's easy to get up in the morning and just with the minute your feet hit the ground to get ready, have your morning coffee or tea and just get moving for the day. Um, and in my experience of, my personal experience of using devotions is that it is a disciplined time for me to stop and organize my day around what God is doing and not what my calendar dictates. Uh, and it really changes, it has changed my interactions with people. When I remember to stop and start my day with God or end my day with God um, and tending that relationship, what I have found is that my relationships with others are impacted. I am quicker to forgive. I am more loving and generous. I... I find myself returning back to what it is I read that day or the prayer that was written as a way to continually center myself. Because I, I don't get it right every day and and I struggle and I struggle to to listen to God and not be judgmental and fall into all of those traps. Um, and so devotionals really have been a way for me to keep God in the center of it all. So I hope that you might try this out. Um, and I would request of you if, you, if there was a devotional here that you didn't hear about and that you know and love, um, I would encourage you to post that in the comments here so that others have those resources. I will, of course, um, uh, uh, write up these resources and post them to our website uh, under Faith Formation. Uh, you'll be able to see all of these um, devotional um, options for you. Uh, and I will uh, also list some other websites for you to research uh, if there's a different devotional that you might like to, um, to explore yourself. I, I, a word of caution, not all devotionals are created equal. 
Uh, this means that you might run across a devotional that is watered down in its understanding of God, or it might not present God's grace as the thing that is most important in this world. Um, and I would, so I would caution you around being picky with your devotionals because, because they really do influence our lives and influence our relationships. And if we are reading devotionals that are nothing but rules about how to live our lives rather than receiving God's grace and to give that grace away to others, um, we can find ourselves in some sticky situations um, and find ourselves struggling theologically with our understanding of God and how God shows up in the world. And we might paint a picture of God or have an understanding of God that is less gracious. And so I would just um, uh, encourage you to evaluate these resources um, uh, in a way that like, do they, do they, does this resource speak about the love and the grace of God? Um, and ask that question and see if it fits with you. Sometimes devotionals will challenge us. That's not the same thing as reading a devotional that's unhelpful. Um, I read, I told you I'm reading Richard Rohr at the moment. And I don't agree with everything he says. In fact, some of the stuff he says kind of rubs me the wrong way. But that's a good thing. That challenges me. That's different than reading something that um, uh, that that might be a detriment to my relationships. Reading a challenge or being challenged by someone um, is about growth. So I hope you found this instructive and helpful. Again, I'll post all of these resources on Grace's website. Um, let us conclude in prayer. Oh God, when we have overspent ourselves, refresh us. Refresh us. When we have misplaced our priorities, rearrange us. Rearrange us. When we struggle to accept the new normal, free us. Free us. When we are overwhelmed by grief, rescue us. Rescue us. And when we are just plain tired, Love us. Love us. Amen. As you go on your way, may God go with you. May God go before you to show you the way. May, may God go behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. Remember to tune in on Thursday at noon and we will actually do one of these devotions together. Um, uh, and again, our worship continues uh, on Sundays at 11 a.m. Uh, and we continue to give um, food and, and water outside the church gates every day. Um, please, please um, stop by if, uh, if that is a need of yours. Um, I think that's all of my announcements. You of weary heart, go in peace. Rest in God's care. Thanks be to God.